Namaskar. Hope uh, you are all well in this COVID pandemic time. Respected fellows of the academy and my dear associate members and all participants in the at second media meeting. I'm really grateful for the organizing committee for this wonderful opportunity giving me to present my work. Today I'll be work speaking on self-assembled branch DNA nanostructure as cancer therapeutics. As you know at CSR, I am to work on DNA and the outline of the talk is the discovery of DNA, DNA nanotechnology, genesis of the concept, how we design the oligos and monomeric branch DNA structure and its application. As we are all aware that long back in Germany, in the cellular lab, Friedrich Misser worked on the DNA and for the first time he isolated DNA from the nucleus of the neutrophils. Later in the same group joined the COSEL where he isolated and characterized the components of the DNA in and guanine cytosynthamine and neurosy for which he got Nobel Prize in 1910. Not only in 69, uh, people believed the DNA is the genetic material. It almost took 85 years from Friedrich Nisser to Francis Crick. And in this 85 years, many groups working on DNA and proving the importance of DNA and ultimately the molecular structure of DNA convinced the entire biological group of the entire world that yes, DNA is the genetic material. And now biology turned to a positive mode. And 62, we know that all three people, Crick, Watson, and Wilkins, got Nobel Prize for the molecular structure of the nucleases. And this wonderful paper in 53, uh, 25th, 53, the double helix of the DNA, and we all know that the two strands are run anti parallel to each other, and always one strand binds to the second strand or the complementary strand with the uh, hydrogen bonding. And always the adenine binds to the thymine with double hydrogen bond, one and two cytosine is triple hydrogen bond. And not only that, the very important characteristic of the DNA, all the DNA is follow the Watson sparing rule. As a rule, uh, the DNA is very predictive and always the DNA is double helix and the diameter is two nanometer. The helical tone is 3.4 nanometer. It, the DNA both stiffness and flexibility. The advanced toolbox is available for synthesizing, modifying or replicating DNA and DNA is very, very compatible material. So DNA is not only now interested, interesting molecule for the biologists, it is also a very pioneering molecule for all other, all other material scientists. And this field of DNA nanotechnology started uh, long back uh, in early 80s by Nathan Simon in New York University, where he proposed, of course, he you know, uh, um, uh, conceived the idea from Holiday Junction that not only the two strands will have Watson Creek base pairing, rather the fourth strand can follow the Watson Creek base pairing, rather follow a branch DNA structure. And this monomeric structure, if you'll see, can self assemble to form the polymeric structure using the overhangs. These overhangs are complementary. And initially, he proposed this polymeric structure enabling the protein to bind. As a result, the protein crystallography will be easier. Later on, using the same technology of the branch DNA or the self assembly protocol, people developed a uh, you know, lot many diverse structures using uh, Watson based pairing, of course, taking many more strands, whether it is a box or smiley face or the world map or these you know uh, dna nanostructures all this is possible because of the discovery of atomic force microscope in for which 86 uh, the people got nobel prize the electron microscope or uh, turning microscope and if you see in early 90s to the 2010 you have many di different diverse structures all these structures are typically proposed from the dna whether it is a self-assembled dna or dna origami and and using uh, these structures people uh, from the field of chemistry, physics, computer science, and biologists, enabling the DNA field of DNA nanotechnology. And when I find this paper, particularly the challenges and opportunity in the structural DNA nanotechnology, you'll be happy to know that the two challenges are uh, very important, the cost of the DNA and high error rate of the self assembly. Being a biologist, to have an error-free self assembly, promptly I proposed uh, one method that, as you know, whether the primer and its template DNA binding is very specific, okay? And whether it is in vivo DNA synthesis, as you know, Okazaki fragments and lagging strand, or in vitro DNA synthesis, whether it's a PCR, or pcr or probe hybridization, always the primer binds to the template DNA is very, very specific, and for which we have different you know, assay kit or this COVID testing kit, all through because of the primer and its template DNA is very, very specific. And 
These two, the template and primer sequences can be taken into designing the DNA nanostructure. That's what we proposed for the first time. And if you see, this is a branch DNA structure so taking four strands, the you can say A, B, C, D, or green, red, blue, and uh, pink. And of course, this green and blue, as it's mentioned here, they are not complementary at all. And depending upon the complementary, they will bind, okay? And the person which is not showing any complementary, they won't bind, okay? So now, if we take the four oligos A, B, C, D with five, uh, with three T in the loop for the bending of the DNA or E, B, G, H so of the same strand having five T in the loop for the better bending but flexibility, you'll find different structures. If you will take A, B, C, D individual and draw, you'll get single band and A, C, that means the green and blue, which is not complementary, they are not at all bind and they will not follow what's in grid based fairing, you'll find two bands, okay? Now, if you're taking these oligos, you can propose the double uh, duplex structures, the triplex structure, or monomeric structure. And later on, this monomeric structure, as you know, this portion is complemented to the others. As a result, you will have polymeric structure like this. So this polymeric structure we are thinking of taking from the monomeric structures. Okay. Now uh, these are the structures, uh, and all these oligonucleotides are designed from the different genes from the exon regions of the eratus nervicus that means the primers which is used for the you know pcr that can be just reassembled in a manner to form the stable branch dna structure that's what very objective of the work and if you see individual oligos which are complementary they are binding as required with their one is to one ratio whether it is ab cd ad or bc and if you screen all these individual oligos the di oligo trial complex you find the individual oligos are migrating faster the moment they hybridize with the complementary oligos so there is di oligo complex ac bc or ab ad and tri oligo complex abc abd then slowly the retarded and ultimately you will find monomeric structure as well as polymeric structures all these very clear stable structures of branch dna are used the desalted oligos which are very cheap and just to prove uh, page purified oligos, the page purified oligos also send the similar results. But we find monomeric and polymeric structures together. To get only polymeric structure, we just uh, you know removed that loop length, the 3T or 5T. That means the loop length enhances the flexibility. As a result, the polymeric structure uh, forming, but at the same time, we'll have monomeric structures. And you'll find if you remove the you know, over uh, the, the loop length, the 3T and 5T will end up with the monomeric and uh, polymeric structure only. And this loop length also very important role, whether you are forming monomer one or monomer two, if you so much flexible, then you may not find the monomer one, you'll end up with the monomer two. Thus, this monomer and polymer is all dependent of, upon the loop length of the oligonucleotides. And when you remove the loop length, you are finding only polymer structures, there is no monomer. Okay. So this is how we'll uh, develop. And this is what the monomer structure is acting. Uh, uh, derived uh, overhangs is complementary as a result. This monomeric structure self assembled to form polymeric structures. We believe this polymeric structure is very large, micrometer scale range, and uh, for biomedical application, we can have only monomeric structure, rather homogeneous monomeric structure. Okay. And these structures are very stable, and these all always they bind to the one is to one is to one ratio. If you increase a little bit, then you are finding unused oligos or di oligos complexes. These structures are also very stable. One to need is old stable in different time points. Also, we see check the stability of the structure. They are very stable. Now we propose: Can we, uh, you know, um, change the actin to G3 PDS so that overhangs are changed so that they will not bind each other? As a result, we will find homogeneous structures. They won't further self assemble to form polymeric structure. Rather, we'll get only monomeric structure. And these structures are five by twenty nanometer size, which can be used directly for biomedical applications. And if you see earlier, we're finding monomeric and polymeric structure both in ABCD. Now, by changing the overhangs. We are getting only monomeric structure. There is no overhangs. To further, these are the monomeric structure. If we incubate with the non-complementary oligos, which is not complementary, there is no change. Rather, the non-complementary oligos are unused oligos. But while we are putting incubating with complementary oligos, whether it's one, two, they are really shifting. That means they are very specific binding as because of the uh, designing of the oligos. And in even in presence of non-complementary oligo mixture, okay, their binding is very specific. Further. 
This monomeric structure can be used further in unicellular applications and will bind very specific as in efficacy therapeutics. As you know, in recent days, the RNA studies, maybe publications per year, we find 50,000 publications in RNA, particularly in microRNA, also more than 15,000, and RNA and diagnostics for or, or for therapeutics, particularly the microRNA, are used for the diagnostic and therapeutic applications. As you know, in 2006, uh, you know, after the RNA interference discovery, the microRNA, the such oligonucleotides, are plays very important role in gene regulations. And we know 34% of the microRNAs contributing for the cancer. Not only that, particularly those microRNAs are upregulated in disease onset, very less are downregulated. And for the first time in 2017, uh, phase three clinical trial moved to the microviracin, which is microRNA based drug. Keeping that in mind. Uh, the 19 to 24 oligonucleotides long microRNA can be targeted using this branch DNA structure. And we know these microRNAs are controlling 60% of the protein coding genes. And not only that, in the microRNA can target many micro mRNAs or messenger RNA. And a single messenger RNA can also be targeted by multiple microRNAs. Thus, it is very important to understand the cancer progression can be possibly controlled by the downregulating the oncogenic microRNA or overexpressing microRNA. To prove this uh, idea, uh, we propose that FOXO1, which is a tumor suppressor protein, is downregulated in M7 seven cell lines, seven, seven cell lines, and it is controlled by three microRNA, microRNA 27A, 96, and 182. These three microRNA are upregulated during cancer, and to downregulate, we propose this branch DNA can carry the ORNs. That means in the ORNs, we can propose we can put the antimicroRNA, and when this antimicroRNA branch DNA can be you know transfected to the MCF7 cell lines, they will bind to the specific uh, oncogenic microRNAs and they will be titrated. As a result, the MCF7 cell lines will express the FOX1 will be very high. So, keeping that in mind, we have a scaffold that is controlled and branch DNA having 27A only microRNA or 96, 192. And also we have a branch DNA having mix. That means the way we propose, we call this a mixed branch DNA uh, nanostructure. And these are the assembled structure of the microRNA. Before transfecting to the cell lines, we check that whether they are binding very specifically to the respective microRNA. Yes, they are binding. If you see, these are the individual branch DNA structures. And in presence of respective microRNAs, 2796 and 182, they are really you know, uh, retarded. As a result, we can see, yes, uh, they can be used in cellular applications. And not only that, uh, if you see the serum stability, we have compared to the only antimicroRNA. So these are the branch DNA structures having the antimicroRNA, and they are very stable up to 48 hours in serum, if, um, serum you, know, you know, fetal bovine serum. And whereas in antimicroRNA without branch DNA, that means the single naked uh, individual antimicro, which used conventional method, they are degraded in 12 hours time. And this is how you will see in 48 hours stability of the branch DNA bearing the antimicroRNA better capable of you know injecting to the cell lines uh, as compared to the individual antimicroRNA, which is almost degraded in 48 hours. That means it is more two times more stable than the individual antimicroRNA. And after in transfecting to the cell lines, it is very important. This should be very, very uh, biocompatible and should not interfere with the enzymic activity. And one such enzyme we have incubated with the branch DNA structure that is called bovine liver catalase. And this is an enzyme, high, high, high turnover rate, degrading the hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. And while interacted in the fluorescence, we find there's a strong interaction between the branch DNA and the enzyme. But the activity is unaltered. That's very important. Though it's interacting with the proteins inside the cell, but it's not uh, you know, affecting the activity. And in the whether one hour in 24 hours time, there is no change in presence of branch DNA scramble. Rather, in presence of branch DNA mix, the activity is rather stabilized. And uh, you know, 500 nanomolar, it is quite you know, significant stability. That means the enzyme activity is not altered in presence of branch DNA. Thus, they are good biocompatible material. Now we have transfected the individual antimicroRNA, 100 nanomolar and 25 nanomolar of branch DNA because it's four times uh, less concentration because it's one molecule and having four overhangs having the uh, strands. And these four strands, these are the four strands assembled to a particular structure. And to see the result, the overexpressed uh, or the you know oncogenic microRNA 27, 96, 1, and 82 in presence of antimicroRNA, which is shown in blue is really decreases with respect to the control. And in presence of antimere branch DNA, they're further reduced. That means the antimere branch DNA are better capable of titrating the uh, microRNA than the antimicroRNA. Because of the overstability of the antimere branch DNA, they're better candidate than conventional antimicroRNA. Not only 
that we have also checked the FOX1 expression, the FOX1A, which is a tumor suppressor protein in, in MCF7 cell lines, which uh, are earlier down regulated, now they are you know, off regulated, and this is the worsened blood result of the FOX1 expression. FOX1 is a major transcription factor. We have also checked the P21, P27 expression. There also expression is quite high in presence of branch DNA, uh, 27, 96, and uh, 27A branch DNA structure, as well as and branch DNA mix. Similarly, FOXO3, beta catenin, cadherin, and other expression is also uh, equally um, high in presence of anti mir branch DNA. Thus, this uh, anti mir branch DNA structures, which is carrying the you know, anti-microRNA, can be transfected to the any cell lines, not only cancer, it can be enable the cell uh, to, to titrate uh, the overexpressing or the oncogenic microRNA so that the gene regulation can be controlled. To conclude, the oligonucleotides, which is derived from the eukaryotic genomic sequences, are able to create stable and biocompatible branch DNA nanomaterials. They are very stable. And the specific hybridization and high yield of branch DNA was observed during phase, both using the resulted and page verified oligos, higher serum stability, and then conventional antisense oligonucleotides is the major cause why the anti mere branch DNA structures are very efficient in regulating the gene expression than their you know, counterpart of antimicroarray. The binding of branch DNA material with the enzyme is uh, not inhibiting the activity, rather it is stabilizing the activity and they are very biocompatible. As a result, the application of antimere branched in nanostructure for regulating oncogenic microRNAs in cancer cell lines can be taken further to other uh, you know, uh, disease conditions. The branched DNA not only can uh, carry the four or five microRNA or antimicroRNA, they can be taken, you know, many microRNA uh, for regulating the gene expressions. So, depending upon the branch DNA structure, uh, we can have different, uh, you know, anti-microRNA. And also, currently, we are working on the, you know, presenting the microRNA. So, both the genes can be off-regulated or down-regulated, depending upon the presence of anti-microRNA or microRNA. As a result, we can regulate the gene expression. So, with this, uh, this is the group of people who are working on branch uh, DNA structures. And uh, I'm really thankful to all of them, and particularly I thank you uh, for your kind you know, presence. And I'm grateful for the Indian Academy of Science, Bangalore, for this wonderful opportunity in the 32nd media meeting to present my work. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Subudhi. Uh, I don't see yet any questions in the chat box, but I would like to ask you a question. So, how do you envisage this actually being used in cancer therapeutics in the future? Uh, will it, how far away are we to actually use this in cancer therapeutics? Yes, since, uh, as you know, in many of the cancer, this uh, microRNA are regulated. And conventionally, people use the antisense oligonucleotides or antimere oligonucleotides. Of course, using the modified oligonucleotides, the stability is increased. And since one micro, uh, one messenger RNA, one particular gene is controlled by multiple microRNAs, therefore, is it very important that we should design a structure which can carry simultaneously, you know, three, four, or maybe more than that micro uh, anti -micro RNA to regulate the gene expression. And this branch DNA, uh, they are very, very biocompatible and can be injected to the intravenous. People have, uh, you know, reported that. And these are used for both the purpose. This itself has a drug as well as carrier. So by 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 modifying the structure with gold nanoparticle, people have reported that these branch DNA structures can solve both as a carrier as well as drug for the therapeutics, not only for cancer, for others as well. But people have not yet tried with the, you know, a clinical trial. People are still working on cell lines and in vivo model to make further research. It will enable uh, the branch DNA therapeutics. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.